Thank you, Admir and Mangus and Thomas and Karen for inviting me into the Shark Tank. I'm not sure how many people know of that show in the U.S., but it's a kind of reality show where some schmucks in there trying to get money from these guys and they just grill them mercilessly. So hopefully you run out of time before you guys can do that to me. You guys, have, some of you probably heard of EST, or Roman Obscure Transport. A lot of, you can read the RFC numbers and stuff yourself. My objective here today is to explain to you uh, at a high level to you, those of you that haven't seen it, um, and why I think it's a very good way to move forward and how it helps us in interoperability in, in the IoT and other spaces. Once upon a time, I didn't know how to spell PKI, and I thank Dan for explaining these DV and OVs and things because I really didn't know what they were. I had no clue. I was living a happy little life selling these embedded routers for the presidential helicopter and for mining and oil and gas and all these things, and it was a great life. Nobody asked me about PKI, so I just didn't take the time to figure out. I knew what crypto was because my technical guy says it's in there, so that's, that's all I knew. So then, as Cisco always does, they reorganize a lot, and I've been in the same group for 11 years now, and it's been six or seven different names. Our current group is called the Security and Trust Organization, and our job is to provide technologies very similar to the ones you guys have in your SAE, you know, across all of Cisco's platforms life. So I'm going from selling routers and switches to your product now is a library, and I'm like gag me with a spoon. This better get better because this is not looking fun. So I didn't know much about it, so I started digging in and pulling on little threads and stuff like that. Oops, wrong button. Come on. So I told, I learned about this thing called elliptic curve cryptography. It's a great thing. All my crypto geeks said you need to learn this and make sure all the Cisco products start using it. Only problem is. You need certificates, you need to do this thing called enrollment, which I had no clue was. I just figured they mysteriously showed up on the boxes or I don't know somehow they got there, but Skep couldn't do it, so that was okay. Then the, one of my smart guys said, we got this new thing coming out, says EST, you should use it. It's a great thing, it's easy to use. I say, cool. And then I pull the thread a little more, it's like, holy cow. <laughs> you know, Cisco could do anything we want, but without the help of all of you guys, it's really irrelevant. It really doesn't matter, and that even helps within my business. It started off, you need a CA that does it. Which CA does it? I don't know. What do we have in our company for CAs? We've got a whole bunch of them, but none of them are like, you know, the class of the CAs you guys do. So the, the journey was not only understanding what it is, getting our products to do it, but it was working with companies like DigiCertz and EBGCA and several others to convince them this is a useful thing. And we've done a lot of interrupt testing with them and it's starting to move forward and I'll talk that, about that in a little bit. But this time all I saw was that big old plate of spaghetti and all this work, so it's like why can't I go back and use SCEP? Blah, 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 there's, there's vulnerabilities. Well, maybe we can fix that vulnerability and if you're following that standard, there's a lot of people trying to shoehorn it in. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Then I stepped back, and as I started learning more, because there's a lot of smart people in Cisco and across the industry, I learned there's a lot of, and I'm not trying to insult anybody here. I mean, I know there's a lot of really good systems out there, but when I look at what I have in my house and some of the Cisco older solutions and some of the other capabilities, there's a lot of things that need to be done to improve the way the customers utilize PKI. And the, to me, the probably most important ones are, are the ones up on the right. So having looked at that and looked at there's 31 different revisions on the SCEP, you know, to me it was like, okay, we're putting a lipstick on a pig. That's not going to end well. I mean, somebody may try to use it, but there's, that's not the best way to do it. So go to EST, and if you, you have trouble sleeping or you really enjoy reading these things, you can go out and read the RFC. I didn't. I, I just couldn't do it. But I, I picked out a couple of the words that are important to me. It's a way to enroll... Uh, certificates for clients, so my router or my whatever, that's the way I can automate getting the certificate on there. So I've learned what certificates are and how to get on there. I use some standards-based stuff. The thing that really gets me excited, and somebody talked about this yesterday, was crypto resiliency. Yeah, we're, you got RSA today, and, and if you look at the different things in U.S. government, they talk about use ECC, don't use ECE, use RSA, don't use RSA. I don't know where the ball is stopped, but it, you know, with the crypto stuff coming, you know there will be changes in, in the future. So to me, crypto resiliency is really, really important. 
Uh, one that you don't hear about, and I still have trouble wrapping my head around this one, is a service side key gen, because like nobody should have my key. It's mine. I don't want to give it to anybody. But then you look at some of the applications like in the cloud or in IoT devices and stuff like that. There are some real live use cases. I still don't embrace it, but it, they really do exist. So it's got some pretty cool capabilities. Um, super high level product manager version here. You, you know, you, you get your CA certs. They help you understand what you can look at. You send a request, magically get signs, it comes back. You use HTTPS, so it's, you know, it's not a lot of rocket science. Again, You've got a bunch of simple URLs that help you do this. You know, one of the cool ones is this, uh, where is it, arbitrary label one, which you're trying to figure out what that is, but a lot of people are actually using that if you need different profiles for your certificates. You know, that is one way that we've seen people use it. So it, it's for, for many cases, it's not going to do everything, and there are a lot of use cases where other methods like CMP are appropriate, um, but for a lot of the masses, we believe this is really important. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, security is another one. Skep has, you know, you pre-shared password. There's a lot of different ways of doing it here for TLS. You can see in the bottom, and I put it in kind of light gray OAuth token. We stuck that in the open source library I talked about in a minute, but the different ways of doing it. Uh, the one that I'm seeing most prevalent both today and starting to come up, in, in Cisco we call them SUDI, secure identity that's burned into the equipment. Different people call them different things. But it's, you know, you, you burn it in at the factory when it goes out, and that's a way to help do the onboarding, and, and I'll show one way we can do that in a minute. But th there's lots of different ways of doing it. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, I, I guess the other thing on here, as TLS changes, and we all know it will, eventually somebody's dream of TLS 1.3 will get approved, or, you know, and, and since you're riding on top of that, the EST protocol itself doesn't change. The only thing that EST requires is that you use at least TLS 1.1. .1. Um, kind of super fast table, and I won't go through all of them. I know we're getting close to the break time, and, and Karen was worried about time, but I, I was counting on this. Um, the ones that are kind of important to me, yes, it's got ECC, but it also, it's kind of, it, um, it doesn't really matter. It's agnostic, so it can do that. Um, the C over rollover is another one. Something we mentioned before, what happens if you want to go from a SHA-1 to 256 on your cert? There's provisions in there to do it, um, and that, that worked quite well. So those are the key one, and, and I'll, I'll just nag on SCAP again here at the bottom. They're up to 32 revisions over 16 years, and it's still not there. So I'm sure you can get it to work, but I think it's time to move on to something else, either this or one of the other options that do exist. Um, some high-level use cases, if you go in these, most of these will list both SCEP or EST, but we're starting to see a lot of adoption there. Um, the next one is kind of a use case that drove it home for me. If you go to customers and say, do you want to use EST, they'll look at you like, what the hell are you talking about? Or, or even ECC, they don't know, and they don't care. But they'll come back and say, I want every device in my network to have its own certificate. I don't want it to renew every three days or, you know, whatever the number happens to be. You know, I want a way of tracking all of this. So what they're looking for is what I, you know, a, a very agile, um, active certificate manager approach as opposed to stick it on there and hope when you come in one day after the weekend that, you know, your certificate hasn't expired. Uh, they also want the auto-enrollment, stuff like that. So kind of getting close, and I'll talk about some new extensions here as far as driving adoption. Again, remember the big old plate of spaghetti that we had is how do we move this forward? Uh, we've done a couple different things. One is there's a set of libraries that are out on open source that we've created. We've gotten some fairly significant inputs from several of the organizations in, in this group here, so I appreciate uh, your inputs on that. We had one, one of our engineers on a whim developed a plug-in for the Microsoft server. Um, and just stuck it out there. I learned uh, about a week or so ago that the U.S. government actually took that as part of one of their R&D efforts. They've actually beefed it up to something for real. They've added the full CMC messaging in there and several other capabilities, and they'll be releasing that back to open source sometime fairly soon. So if, I don't know where David is in, in this maze, but, you know, they did use Bouncy Castle, so a lot of that capability would probably be pretty easy for him to put in his capability and available for you guys in Prime Key. Test server, I, I asked one of our guys to go take a look at this. So like, I mean, how I'm getting periodic pings from people across the industry. Sometimes it's from embarrassing things where 
oh, your, your cert on the server expired. That's really embarrassing to me, but it, it happens. Uh, they go out there and do it. But so I asked somebody, well, go take a look at the logs and tell me who's using this, how, much, how many people are using this. And I was expecting here a number like 20 or 50 or something, a six-month-old data. Six months ago, it was 643 different people using it. And, and there's some names I wasn't expecting that were some pretty big people. So there's, there's a lot of people being silent. I hope it's all of you guys, but there's a lot of people being silent. They're looking into this, um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, I, somebody talked about this before, but we also, you know, help fund Bouncy Castle, add the EST in, into their library, so that capability. The, the objective there is, is twofold. One is, you know, you're, you're, you're doing an IoT system or you're developing a system, and, and you need to put capabilities in there. And if your product manager says, I need this whole heap of real features that people are asking for, and you're the little security weenie that says, I need you to add EST, they're going to tell you to go away unless you, it's so easy for them to add. So that, that was one of the reasons for doing it, making it very easy for the different product teams to add the capability. And the second one is, with all specs, you can read them differently. And as we've tested with a lot of the different platform teams that are CA vendors and Bouncy Cancel, we found some, some different variants. So try to get, get that to converge so that when everybody starts to implement and use these libraries, we have interoperability, which is truly important in, in our respect. And educate customers, that's why I'm here. All right, what's up here? Okay. These are some extensions that we're working on. They're all standards-based. They're not something that Cisco is doing alone. If, if you actually go to the links on the top and get into them, you can find there's some, some fairly prominent people. I think MUD's kind of a strange name for something, but it really works. This particular use case, and I'll just build it out to, to save you guys some time. Um, is that the last of it? Yeah. This particular use case is what should a, an IoT device that you're trying to onboard be able to do? Well, Target find out that you know somebody in their HVAC system shouldn't be able to get to their point of sale. That's a bad thing, right? You know, so the whole premise here is it's defined. The, the device will send up, and there's a couple ways to do it. You can send it up in a certificate, but you send up. This is a place that tells what I'm supposed to be able to do. That comes back to the controller in your system called a MUD controller here. You look at that, and if you agree with it, then you allow the onboarding to proceed, A, and B, you set up your network to protect you know, bad thing, you know, inappropriate access within the network. So using the network to help define the, the scope and what you can do. It's kind of an extension of the segregation, uh, segmentation of, of the networks that a lot of people recommend you do. Pretty simple concept, a lot of different ways to do it. Um, it's either at last call or getting ready for last call or second last call for this one, I believe. So this is moving forward. The second one has a little more direct tie into EST. Um, when you look at enrollment, it's how can I prove to Dan that I am who I am so he'll give me a certificate. That's the whole premise, right? This is how do I know I'm supposed to trust Dan? If, if I'm a, a, a hospital bed or, or a MRI machine or something high value, how do I know that I can trust the thing I'm supposed to trust? That's the problem that, that this particular capability is dealing with. You know, so it, it you know, Sends, basically sends a request. It's got this voucher in it that goes back, and there's several ways of doing this. The voucher goes up to the manufacturer. The manufacturer says, yay, verily, this is the guy who owns you. Uh, if you're familiar with the Intel's Marshall Point, it's somewhat similar in that capability where the device is trying to figure out who we can trust. Uh, the voucher goes back to the, the device, and it says that's, that has the, the root certificate in the, the domain certificate, pass it down to devices, ah, I can trust this guy, and then he uses EST after that to enroll. So it's a process. Who do I know that I should trust and how I can enroll with them? And once you've done that, you do the EST, get your certificate, and then you proceed however you want to do. Last one has nothing to do with EST, even less than the MUD does. But it's, I, I, was, I thought it was important to listen to all you guys talk before, and you guys probably already know this. Um, I also like fishing, so I want to picture fishing in there. Um, and, and if you look at any of the security reports, almost all of them will say, hey, there's a lot of people out there that are phishing or insider attacks. They get your username, password, get into your device or your server or where to have you, and you just have a field day. 
So people keep coming to me and my group, my little common module group, and say, well, you need to work on a better password library. And it's like, that does seem right to me. and just kind of nuts. So there's a new RC. There's a lot of products do it. A lot of ours do it. I was, hopefully yours do as well. But basically, if you can use certificates to do your authentication and get into your device with SSH, just a strong suggestion that you consider that uh, to, to avoid what we see is is the, the number one or a very large attack vector into many of the different products. Done. See, I talk too fast. <laughs> so if you have any hard questions, you know Hendrick here knows EST better than I do, so I'll pull him up here. But if you have easy ones, I'll try to field them, or I'll get you answers afterwards. Yes, sir. I have that available. I didn't bring it here. I mean, the bigger issue on CMP is it's, it's more powerful, more flexible, which also impacts interoperability because different people pick different things. But it really depends on your environment because there, there's valid reasons for using it. But, you know, we believe for a large majority, EST is probably a better choice. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just asking because we, we I know. I know. Well, the, the other issue, and I can pull in the, the smart guy in our team that does because we, we actually had several of these conversations with the industry, and, and one of the ones is CMP tends to be heavier weight in, in doing it. But, yeah, I'm aware that this would be mandated. And yeah, so, Mike, maybe I can jump in and give you a hand. So, CMP and EST, um, the point with LTE networks is that was standardized in the Thank you. Yeah, for, from my perspective, the key is interoperability and the crypto agility. Those are very, very important. There's cases where you can't use TLS or other things, and then you, you're, you're forced to use it, and it's not a bad thing. It's just a different thing. It's the same reason RSA today, I mean, uh, SCEP today can't do ECC because of the way they are tied to how they, they do their encryption. But the simplicity of it, I think, will help it get adopted pretty well. Anything else? Thank you for your time. <laughs>